Hey, Christina. Hey, Shanda. You guys, this is going to be good tonight. I hope you saw the topic. Like, I hope you're here because you saw the topic. If you saw the topic, go ahead and share that out. Go ahead and share that out right now. If you saw the topic, go ahead and share it out. Rosalind, share it out. <laughs> it's going to be good tonight. It's going to be good. Yes, sex games. Woohoo! Say it again. Sex games, baby. Uh-huh. You don't know what to expect. <laughs> good evening. Good evening. Good evening, y'all. Hello. Hello. It's going to be good. You know, whenever I learn something new, I'm always sharing it. I'm always sharing it with my wives and my wives in waiting. Good evening. Go ahead and share this. And you know what? We really need some men on this scope tonight. Because sex in marriage, and I'm, I'm starting slow because I've learned that um, Periscope has a delay. Good evening, Derek. How are you? So we're going to be talking about sex. Talk about sex, baby. We're going to talk about sex. Sex games for married couples. Increasing your intimacy. And how to enjoy sex in your marriage. How to enjoy sex in your marriage. You know, so often after we get married, that's when the sex life goes down. I'm just talking about me. Maybe it didn't do that for you. It went down after I had kids. We've been married for 17 years, just in case um, anyone wanted to know. I am the author of A Prophet to Her Husband. My name is Dr. Melinda Harper. I'm the author of, yes, After Babies. I'm the author of A Prophet to Her Husband, which really teaches wives about um, the assignment of being a wife. Often I heard women say, I want to be married, I want to have a husband, but rarely have I heard a woman say, I want to be a wife. Because when you say you want to be a wife, you can only be a wife to that husband. You can't be a wife to yourself. You can't be a wife to your children. You can't be a wife to that job or to that career. You're a wife to your husband. But often we say, I want to be married. I want to have a husband. You know why we say we want to be married? If you're honest with yourself, you thought about all the benefits that marriage would bring you. When you said that you wanted a husband, you thought about the benefits of having a husband and what that would bring you. So really, when you say you want to be married and you say you want a husband, you're thinking selfishly. But it is so unselfish to say, I want to be a wife. So that's the purpose of me writing my book. <laughs> I just wanted to get that out there. So I'm trying to change the mindset of wives. We're not just married. We don't just have husbands. We have an assignment of being a wife. But that's not what the scope is about tonight. The scope is about once you're a wife and you're, you're in this relationship, you're in this marriage, and the sex goes down. The sex fizzles. You're not doing it as much. The kids come along and you, you're trying to fit sex in. And then sex starts to not even be intimate anymore. You're just doing it. Sometimes you're doing it out of obligation. Sometimes you're doing it because you want to release some stress off of yourself. Or he may want to release some stress off of himself. And it... it and it becomes more of a task, more of a task. And then if you don't watch it, it'll be weeks before you have sex, which is not good. It's not good. I know couples who say, we haven't had sex in two months. We haven't had sex in two years. We haven't had sex in, better not say two decades. That's a long time not to be having some sex. But people go, couples go lengths of time without having sex and not realizing that that connectedness, that connectedness, you need that. 
to continue to be one, to continue to be of one mind, one, one heart, one vision in the marriage. Yeah, I can't do it either. I can't. And if you have to, um, if you have to schedule it in because of your busy life, yeah, you have to be connected. If you have to schedule it in because of your busy life, do that. Don't feel like because I'm scheduling it, it's less, uh, it's, you know, it's less sex or it's less, I don't know the word I'm looking for. It's less romantic because I had to schedule it. No, schedule it. Don't let three days go by. That's, that's our, that's our rule. We'll talk about us. We don't let three days go by because I can start getting irritable. He starts getting irritable. He's like, ah, I know what you need. I know what you need. Today's Wednesday. Hmm. I saw you like that on Sunday. I know what you need. <laughs> that's for us. Make time. Exactly. Okay. So tonight, when we get finished with this, like I did with a hundred ways to love your husband or a hundred ways to show your husband that you love him. We did that a few months ago. And every week I came back with 10 more ways to love your husband, to show him that you love him. I'm going to do the same with the sex games. I'm going to draw it out because you can't handle all of it at one time. No, you can't. No, you can't. So I'm going to give you three tonight. I'm going to give you three tonight. But in the end, we will have 100 sex games. Woo! 100 sex games. Now, you know what? After I give you these 100 sex games, if your sex ain't on fire after this, I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say. Because I'm about to give you 100 great sex games for couples. All right? <laughs> if you want it, press one. Press one if you want it. And this is just for couples who are looking to um, add a little excitement. Mm -hmm. If you want to add a little excitement into your marriage, add a little flavor into your sex. And we can talk about flavor too in the sex. Due to illness and life situations and me not making enough money, no sex. We're going to talk about all that. Talk about, yes, get your pens and get your paper. Get your pens, get your paper, take notes. Yes, we're going to call this 100. We're going to be on 100, but tonight we're just going to get three. And Derek, we're going to help you. I'll say, okay, so for couples who are inhibited, that means you're kind of holding back. This will help you. Come through, married sex. That's right. This will help you. And these games will help you move past that inhibition. I don't know how we got so inhibited once we got married. Because before you were married, I'm going to talk about me. I, I keep saying you. I'm going to talk about me. I'm going to be transparent. Me. Before I got married, who I was a freak. Freak. Yes, I could think up some stuff. Right? You know, your panties had to match. The bra had to match. <laughs> And then I would plan my sex capades. Yes, I would. I would plan my sex capades. So if I knew I was going out with him and I wanted to get me some, because I wanted to I wanted to get me some, I would make sure that I, you know, spruced up a little extra, might get some false lashes, um, make sure I did my makeup. Might even go pick out an outfit that fit a little extra. Made sure my panties and bras match just in case I'm going to give them some. Right? We did all that. That's a plan. You planned for it. But you planned for Kevin. You planned for Billy. You planned for Carl and Cameron and Jose. We're going to cover everybody. You planned for all of them. Hey, Big Dre. Hey, Andre, you planned that before you got married. You planned your sex capades. But once you get married, you don't plan anymore. The devil's a lie. The devil is a liar. You should be planning that still. You shouldn't have been planning it back then. But you definitely, darn sure, should be planning it now. So how did you get so inhibited in your marriage, how'd you all of a sudden stop wanting to to be a freak? Hmm. Because you don't want him to think you're a freak. Is that why? No, your husband should know the freakiness in you. Your wife should know the freakiness in you. So here's my challenge for you tonight. After we finish all this, I'm gonna whisk, let me say this to you. 
You ready? I am right now releasing the freak. I release the freak in you in the name of Jesus. I release the, in the, by the power of God, I release the freak in you. I can say that because God made sex for marriage. That's who it's for. Yes, the 70 out, the 72 hour freak. We always do the 72 hour blessings at our church. So I'm releasing the 72 hour freak right now in the name of Jesus. There you go. 72 hours, you shall be a freak. All right, there we go. But here's a question. When did you become so inhibited? Unleash the inner beast. Yes. When? Hopefully you understand that great sex is more than just um, connecting your bodies. It's spiritual. It's emotional. And it's physical. It's all three of those things. So let me talk about the spiritual aspect of sex. So not many people give thought to the spiritual aspect of sex. But if you think about God, if you are a Christian, <laughs> okay, <laughs> if you're a Christian and you believe that God made sex for marriage, then there has to be some kind of spiritual aspect of it. Like we're spirits, we're souls, we're, you know, we're human and spiritual at the same time. Yeah, so there's a spiritual, emotional, and physical part of sex, but people often don't Think about the spiritual part. Um, spiritually, if the foundation and trust and respect is not um, is not there, then your sex is not going to be good. It's not. How many times have you, as a wife, felt that? Yeah, it all makes up intimacy. How many times have you ever felt that all your husband wanted was sex, or the only time he ever touched you was sex? That's when he wanted sex. I remember saying to my husband, and this is probably about seven or eight years ago, I feel like a booty call. I feel like a booty call. The only time, this is what I told him. The only time you touch me is when you're ready to get some. Like you don't touch me when we're at the grocery store. You're not holding my hand. Um, if we're sitting down and we're watching TV, you don't put your hand on my leg. If I'm in the kitchen, you don't come up behind me and kiss me on my neck like you used to. The only time you touch me is when we're in the bed and you want to roll over and get some. I feel like a booty call. You start feeling sort of like a prostitute, a hoe, a whore. I mean, I, that's how I felt. And he was like, no, no, no. I'm not trying to make you feel like that. I'm not trying to make you feel like that. But that's how I felt. So we had to figure out a way, and this had to do a lot with our love language as well, which we didn't know anything about love languages then. So that was part of the reason why I was feeling that way because my love language is quality time. You spend some quality time with me, which even goes back to dating. I didn't just give it up when I was dating. He spent, Joe could spend some time with me first, right? He spent some time with me. So when he put that time in, then I was ready to, you know, do the sex capade. So, but when you get married, in his mind, I'm coming home. I'm spending time with you. We sleep together every night. I'm spending time with you. What are you talking about? I don't spend time with you. I see you every single day. But that wasn't what quality time was to me. But we had to learn what our love languages were so that he could um, satisfy my love language so that I would feel like he spent some time with me and I didn't feel like a booty call anymore. I didn't feel like um, a hoe, like he just wants me for sex. So we had to fix that, but I had to tell him too. So if that's how you're feeling and you have not talked to your husband or your wife about that, because sometimes the role is flipped, she wants it all the time and he doesn't, talk to him, talk to her, figure out what your love language is. Well, my husband's love language, one is acts of service and the other is touch. So him touching, you know, every time you touch him, he wants to have some. So he figured, well, why don't you? <laughs> but I started feeling empty as a result of that, that spiritual intimacy was missing. So I started to feel empty. I started to not even want to have sex as often, right? But do you know when that spiritual intimacy, when you are able to open up to your spouse and talk to them, 
that that spiritual intimacy will be heightened and it will heighten your sex. It will heighten your sex life. So how do you build the spiritual intimacy? I'm looking at my notes. That's how I am. I don't just come on here off the cuff, y'all. I have to have my notes and I have to hit certain things. Some of this is in my book. The truth about the book is called A Prophet to Her Husband, but I have a chapter in there called The Truth About Sex. So if you do want to pick that up, oops, sorry, my bad. If you do want to pick that up, just go to my website. So what I'm talking about tonight is sex, and I have a chapter of The Truth About Sex in my book. Okay, so how do you build spiritual intimacy? Um, you have to be intentional. You have to be intentional in discussing the issues of the heart. Sometimes it's hard to talk about the issues of the heart. You have some issues and that's why you're not having sex. I don't know what your issue is. Mine was, I didn't feel valued. I didn't feel, um, actually I didn't even feel sexy because you can just roll over and do it. You didn't caress no hair. You didn't touch no butt. You didn't touch me on my neck. My leg. You didn't kiss me. You just... You kissing body parts because you're trying to get those aroused. But what about me, right? So you have to be able to talk. You gained weight and it has affected you. Can I tell you, I was, I felt like that. He didn't care about the weight. They don't, a lot of times they don't care about the weight. That's us. But if you're really concerned about the weight, we can go on a, we can go on a, um, yeah, he doesn't. My husband didn't either. He doesn't now. Girl, I'm still a big girl. <laughs> He'd be like, bring that on here, girl. But yeah, don't let the weight, <laughs> don't let the weight um, bother you, okay? Don't let it bother you. And be honest with him because if that's your issue, just be honest with him and say, baby, you know, I don't feel as sexy anymore because of my weight. I've lost all interest, no touching problems since childhood. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And that happens. That's an issue. So those issues, if you've been molested, if you've been raped, if you if you have cases of incest, you are going to have to eventually talk to your husband about that or talk to your wife about that. Men have been molested too. And there's a lot of men who've been molested or raped and they're not saying anything either, which causes their relationships and their sex and their relationship to be um, decreased as well. But you're gonna have to talk, communication. We always say that communication is key. Communication is essential. But how many of us actually communicate? Maybe we're, we're fearful, we're afraid of what they might think, what they might say, but nine times out of 10, you're married. They want to know. They need to know. Okay, cool, catch the replay. They need to know because that's what's hindering not just your sex life, but your married, your healthy married relationship. Tonight we're talking about sex, but all of this can go over into your married relationship as a whole. So um, make sure that you are discussing the issues of the heart, discussing the things that is causing you not to not to want to have sex. Thank you, thank you. It's a turtle. Discuss those things. Be honest. And don't discuss them while you're having sex. Sit down one day and say, hey, you know what? I'd really like to talk to you about our sex life. And maybe, and then don't talk right then. If you're talking to your husband, don't talk right then. You need to give him time to process what you just said. You're going to talk about your sex life. So he's like, oh my God, am I, did I mess up? Does she not want it? Da, 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 da. Tell them you're going to talk about it like tomorrow. Okay. Don't just dump it on them and then talk about it. Say, Hey, I'd really like to talk about our sex life. So if you can make some time tomorrow after dinner, maybe we could sit down and talk and then set the timer and talk about 30 minutes and don't bring up anything other than what you say you want to talk about. Don't go back to some argument. Okay. If you want to increase your sex life and increase and make it better, that's what you stick to. Talk about that. Okay. Um, emotional intimacy. What if your husband starts a fight to avoid the talk? <laughs> then you know there's there's another underlying issue. 
then it's something else. But you really want to get him to talk about that. But don't foresee that he's going to start an argument to avoid talk. You haven't even asked yet. Let's be positive. All right. So couples who are intentional about planning and they do things like buy flowers, chocolate. Yeah. Optimistic. Have you talked about sex before? It may have been your tone, your timing, or your tact. So look at the tone of voice you said it in. Look at the timing and the way you said it. My family's coming home now. So be intentional about building that emotional sex. Hey. Okay. And then share share your fantasies. Share your fantasies. And I say that just easily, but it really is a hard thing for people to do, to share their fantasies. And it's difficult for most people because of the embarrassment. Tired, he is not into it, just don't ask for it. You, you guys really need to sit down and talk about why. Get to the root. And you're not, let, me, let me just say this. You are not going to solve it in one day. You're not going to solve it in one uh, session in one conversation. It's not. It's not going to happen that way. It has to be an ongoing conversation. And if you're ready for that ongoing conversation, then go ahead and get it started. And be ready to hear those hard things. I said hard. Ha! Anyway, excuse the pun. Anyway, be ready to hear those those hard things that you may not want to hear, but be ready. And don't get upset at it. Prepare yourself. Prepare yourself for the ugly. What if, just what if he said, I just don't like all the weight you gained. When you get on top, you're too heavy. I mean, what if that's what he said? Be ready for that and be ready to make changes. Then if that's what he has told you, that he does not find you attractive, ask him what he thinks would make you attractive. Because you, you want to be attractive to him. Ask him. It's your husband. We get all caught up with what? He should like me the way I am. But, well, he may not be attracted to that right now. People change. We've been married 17 years. I can show you 17 years of photos from the time I got married, time I got married to now. I don't look the same. I'm still the same person. Maybe not because things have happened that changed my outlook on some things so i can't even say i'm the same person i've transformed into this person who's talking on periscope about sex <laughs> i would have never done this 10 years ago i would have never done this six years ago but i'm doing it now and i look different from what i did when i got married 17 years ago to what i do now thank you so much and so does he when we first got married oh he had the most hideous glasses i ever saw in my life and when I looked at those glasses, those hey, glasses were tight. Hey, baby. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. And when I looked at those glasses, I was like, mm, I don't glasses. like. No, this is not for women only. This is definitely for men too. How is this gonna be for women only, Mr. Tommy, if we're talking about sex and marriage? No, this is for married couples and sex. So yeah, he had these glasses. I was out. I, mm, those glasses were not, they were not becoming on him. And I was like, I don't like those glasses on you. Now he could have got all mad. Well, these glasses you met me in. You need my glasses. Like even now he defends the glasses. No, those glasses were like gangster. They were not even Steve Urkel. I would have went for Steve Urkel glasses. Like he has glasses on now that are just awesome. Because who picked them out? But those glasses were dark and ghetto and I don't know who who helped him do that. But anyway, I didn't like the glasses. You weren't even born, girl. Hush, y'all need to get out of my scope. See, that's why I tried to do this before they came home. Oh, and the pictures at Grandma's house. Okay. But anyway, and there was a time when he had to tell me, I don't like your hair like that. Why would I get upset? In my... In my immature 
emotional days, I would have gotten upset. But if that's not what he likes, then that's not what he likes. Now, there is another side of that to where some men or some women can be so controlling. Like they want to control everything you do, everything you wear, how you talk, how you walk. That's not, that's not what I'm talking about here. I'm talking about making yourself attractive to your husband. Okay. Um, so share your fantasies. And sometimes it's difficult to do that because you, you fear rejection. But just find time to talk, okay? Find time to build that emotional um, emotional connection. And play some lighthearted sex games, which I'm going to give you to play. All right? Let's talk about... In these games, they're going to eliminate the, the pressure of having to be so creative. Like, they're so easy. They're, they're things that you can do that you've probably done before, but you're just not doing anymore. Well, we're going to get you back to doing that. And now let's talk about the physical intimacy. Okay, so most people think that sex is just one aspect. That's how we, that's how we approach it. Like, it's just all physical. And tonight, babe... Thanks. That's him. He just joined. That's my husband, Harper Holmes, 27. Okay. But I've already told you that it's, it's spiritual, it's emotional, and it's physical. So let's talk about the physical part. Yes, your bodies do connect. There is the physical part to it. And there are physical things that can hinder your sex as well. There may be some physical problems that, um, that affect your sex life. Um, sicknesses. Diabetes can affect your sex life. Um, you know, and even with sex, when, when you're healthy, there's ebbs and flows to it. It goes up and down anyway. You may be at a high and he may be at a low and then it reverses. So that's why one of the things that I say is to make sure that you don't let three or four days pass between having sex. Schedule it. That way, no matter if you're high or low, you're still doing it. And let me tell you, if you could be on a low and once you get into it, Hmm. Have you ever done it and you didn't feel like doing it? Be honest. Be honest. If your spouse is on here and you don't want to be honest, then don't. But be honest. Just type one if you've ever done it and you didn't feel like doing it. Like you physically was like, I, I don't feel like doing this tonight. But you did it anyway. One person. Okay. Oh, okay. I didn't think I was by myself. Well, to y'all three who told the truth, high five. Been there too. Nine to 10 months, we're going to get you to where you're three or four days. We got one thing at a time. Yes. Yeah, so, so yes. So Shauna said that once she got into it, once she did it, she got into it. So it's a mind thing as well, especially for women. It's a mind thing as well. So your physical and your mental for women go hand in hand. There's always something that you can do within limits. Yes, there is. Yes, Derek. So even if you have some physical problems, there's always something that you can do to enhance your sex life. As long as you keep in mind that sex is emotional, spiritual, and physical. But we always approach the physical part. That's why I left it for last. That's the last part. If you Increase the emotional side and the spiritual side. Your physical is going to be it's going to be taken care of. Okay, but let's talk about the physical. It's normal to have an ebb and flow in your sex drive, but if it stops altogether, then like if there's some physical thing that stops you altogether, then I would definitely say seek a doctor. Because like I said, sometimes diabetes, there's um, high blood pressure. There's, there may be some other things you need to um, adopt and adapt into your life physically and health-wise to increase your sex life, okay? But there's all, like Derek said, there's always something you can do. But we're talking about emotional, spiritual, and physical, all right? And my last thing I want to say is be free. This isn't the last thing because I've got to give you three, three sex games for tonight that I want you to work on for the week. You're going to do it. You're going to do it. So be free. Be free. Free your mind. Free your mind of every person you've ever been with. 
you may have come into the marriage. It can, okay. It Your sex life can resume. Your sex life can come back. Your marriage can be healed and restored even after infidelity. <laughs> you said you're ready. Okay. Um, be free. I want you to explore. Open your mind. Remove anyone that you've ever been with. You may have come into marriage like, oh, my favorite, um, my favorite position is this. Well, stop because you shouldn't have had a favorite position before you got married. So throw that away. Let's talk about being free. As you take time to build the intimacy spiritually, emotionally, and physically, you will start to experience a greater freedom and joy. So let's talk about the games. The games that I'm going to talk about in this scope are designed to help you do that. Now, let me put out this disclaimer. I'm going to put out this disclaimer real quick. There may be some games that you object to. It's okay. It's okay. When we're done, we're going to have 100 of them. You can throw away 25 of them if you want to. It's okay. The ones that you object to, just throw them out. The ones that you like, do them often. That's it. All right. Some of the games will get you talking, and most of the games will get you touching. You ready for talking and touching? Yes. So here we go. I'm going to give you three tonight, and if you want these in writing, yes, there was some, be <laughs> yes, my disclaimer, thank you so much. There may be some games you object to. It's okay. Throw them out. Yes, 100. Okay, so here's the three I'm going to give tonight. If you want these in writing, then go to my website, drmelindaharper.com, and there will be like a, I think, an um, email thing that you can email me and say, I want the sex games for married couples. If you want the sex games in writing, like you might, oh, this is nice. You might even want to print them out and put them on little cards. And as you collect your sex games, the ones that you like, the ones that you like, because you threw away the ones you didn't like. You put them in a little box and you get to pull them out, right? So what are we playing tonight, baby? Let's see. Da -da -da -da. There you go. I just gave that to you for free. So just email me. Go to my website. My husband just said, don't come to me with, these, with that mess. Girl, don't listen to that. Don't listen to that. That's the enemy. Yes, you can have them in writing. I will email them to you. So go to my website and request those. Yes, he's going to love it. You ready? Here's number one. This is game number one. And it is called Easy as ABC. I'm going to give you the the instructions. The roles have switched. They do switch. If, you, if you've gotten a little older, I can't tell you how old I am. When you get a little older, the woman's libido increases and the man's decreases. So... There is a point where you're just like right there at the same time and then boom, you flip. You flip. But you can still enjoy sex. Okay? Okay, so this game number one is called Easy as ABC. And the length of time that it takes to play it is about 20 minutes and there's no props in this one. For every game, I'm going to give you the instructions. No. The conditions under which you play them and then the variations because nothing is set in stone. Remember that the marriage bed is undefiled, so you can switch it up if you want to. There's some variations to these games. Okay, so this is called Easy as ABC. The instructions are number one is to work your way through the alphabet by massaging body parts. That's easy. Work your way through the alphabet by massaging body parts so you're writing the letter A on his chest or the letter B. And it might be on his chest, on his ankle, on her breast, on the back of her neck. And she has to guess what letter you're writing. And when you make it through the alphabet, choose your favorite and go back and do it. See, while you're exploring and you're writing the alphabet and you hit the letter S, on the back of her neck and she goes "Ooh, remember that one remember that one and go to that one again see part of this is to get to understand and and to get to um learn <laughs> and get to learn your spouse because marriage was meant for 
the lifetime till, till death do us part. You have a lifetime. You have a lifetime together to explore, okay, and to learn. Learn what your spouse likes. So go through the alphabet. When you hit that part, remember it and go back to that often. And then you'll start to laugh. You'll laugh because you'll think of, you know, different things. And just be open. This is not just for the uh, intercourse part of it. Do you go in alphabetical order? Do that. Spell the name. See, that's a variation. Let me go to the conditions. So the conditions, this game is best played on the bed and not a, not a massage table. It's probably best to refrain from lotions during this game because then they dry up or you use too much. And let me tell you, and if the ceiling fan's on and you're using lotion, you get cold, you know, so no lotion, just, just, just draw. And you can try to spell words, but start, it's called the ABCs, easy as ABC. Um, so lotion can be a hindrance. That's what I'm saying. And then the other condition, he said, we're, I'm telling the business. And the other condition is to have soft lighting and music. That's recommended. It's recommended. So I gave you the instructions, what to do, the conditions under which it needs to be done. And here's the variation. Not so easy, ABC. This is a variation. This game follows the general pattern of previous game, but with a few modifications. Instead of massage, think of an think of an action or a body part, all while working through the alphabet. <laughs> you you might first applaud your partner's back, so you're doing different things on their back or on their body. Then you might cuddle. Oh my gosh, son, I'm gonna need you to wrap it up in the kitchen. Sorry. Because what I'm about to say, he's going to be like, that's so inappropriate. That's so inappropriate. Okay, so you might applaud on their back. You might squeeze their arm. You might cuddle the butt. Like sometimes I'll just grab my husband's leg while I'm naked. I'll grab, say, ah. Oh. I'll grab my husband's leg while I'm naked and I'll just hug his leg. And you know what he's feeling. He's like, that hot thing is up against my leg. Ooh. <laughs> or I'll put his foot on my breast. I mean, different stuff. Right. Be Holy Ghost led. So that's the variation of the ABC. Like you're doing different things. All right, here's game number two. Game number two. Uh-oh. That's right. We believe in speaking in tongues. <laughs> okay, game number two is called multiple choice. And this game takes about 10 minutes. Again, there's no props in this one. And here's the instructions, the conditions, and the variations. So here's the instructions. Okay, if you struggle with fear that your partner will reject you, for trying something new sexually, try forming it as a multiple choice. Do it as a multiple choice. By doing this, you communicate your interest in new activities while not pushing too much pressure on your partner. That's one thing. Remember we talked about the respect and the trust. People like options. And if this is all new for you, that gives them a chance to say, you know what? I don't like that, but I do like that. So have some multiple choice, create your list and share it with your partner way before that session. I call, I'm calling it a session, but that activity, that, that ministry moment, we call ours ministry, that ministry moment. Remember I talked about not just springing it on people. Don't just bring it on him. Don't just bring it on her. Create the list early and share it with your partner a session. I know. Share, share with your partner hours prior to the intimacy, the ministry moment, so that there's no pressure that they have to try something new. Now, see, and the reason why I came up with this one is because my husband was uh, more experienced than I was. I'm going to just say it like that. And so he would say, let's do some stuff. And I'm like, I don't know. I don't know if I'm, I don't know if I'm going to like that. I don't know if I'm supposed to like that. Do people like that? 
<laughs> so with the multiple choice and the variations, you can kind of grow to like some stuff. Even with food, you might try broccoli for the first time and you didn't like it. So you had to try it again and then you tried it with some cheese and you might have tried it steamed. Then you might have tried it steamed with some lemon butter. You get the point. You keep trying it and you try it in variations until you find out what you like. So then when you come together, you ask which options they want. <laughs> you ask which options they want. And the conditions, here's the conditions. Choose your list carefully. Don't, ooh -wee, don't just be, you know your spouse. You know what y'all have done so far. You know what has been kind of on and popping. So if you want it on and popping, right? You just put a little on and popping. Like you start here, like this is where y'all are. You just add this much. Then later add that much. So don't come with this crazy list. You never you never did the tying up and the blindfolding and and swinging from the straps before. So don't let the, don't put that on the list as the first thing. You might just want to try blindfolding first. We ain't swinging yet. We're not swinging from the straps. I don't even know how them straps got there. But we're not swinging from those straps. We're just doing blindfolding first. Don't just jump out there with all that. Right. You have to ease up into, and then you might get up to this point and that's where they're comfortable. Then leave it alone, but just keep trying, but don't get all crazy and outrageous with it. Don't scare them. Okay. Um, and here's the variation. Here's the variation. Instead of giving them like the little list, you can send it as an email. You can send it as a text. We do a lot of texting. We do a lot of sex, and I'm just going to say that. Yes, we do. Stop saying that. I'm going to have to teach you how to speak positive. You speak those things that are not as if they were. So don't say what your husband would do, and don't say what he wouldn't do. You say what you want him to do. Like, my husband is going to enjoy this. That's what you say. Okay? Okay. I can't do the negativity. See, the reason why I can talk like that to you is because I've been there. I used to be a negative Nancy. I used to be a stinking, thinking Teresa. No more. No more. Okay? So, send it as an email. Send it as a text. And ask your partner, your husband or your wife, to create a list of their own. Because little do you know, there's some things they might want to do that they haven't done. They might have been like so into pleasing you that they put themselves on the back burner. So both of you guys come with a list. Share the list. Talk about that. Okay, and game number three, this is called 20 questions. You guys played 20 questions before. And it takes about 20 minutes, so a minute a question. And again, there's no props. You're like, when are we going to get to the props? We're going to get to the props. Not today. See, we can't, just like I'm telling you not to just rush in there and do all this stuff. I'm going to take it slow with you. I'm going to take it slow because everyone is not at the same level in this sex thing. But we're bringing it back because we all want to be on this level in sex and marriage. We want our intimacy to be thebomb.com because God designed sex for us. It's a gift for married people. He did not give that gift to single people. He gave it to married people and we need to indulge in that gift. Okay, so here's number three. 20 questions. First, think about a new location for intimacy. What? Not the bedroom? Mm-mm. Mm-mm. And I think next week when I get on here, I want you guys to tell me where you did it. I'm nosy. This is like a teacher. I'm going to check up on the students. <laughs> and you might be giving me some ideas, so please share. Think of a new location for your intimacy. Get out of the bedroom. And right now I'm talking to me too. Because we've been in the bedroom for a while. Mainly because the children. Mainly because of the children. They just be busting up in our room anyway. You said we moved it to another spot in the house for Saturday night. Cool. Yes. Yeah. Oh, you have a barn with a lift in it. Do it. 
Do it. I love it. I need me a barn. Baby, can we get a barn with a lift? <laughs> oh, wow. Uh. Okay, so your partner may then ask you, once you get to this, oh, uh, with a loft. What a loft. What a loft. It's a loft, not a lift. I'm working on it. He says he's working on it. <laughs> okay, so your partner, once you get to this new location, and the reason why you want to take it out of the bedroom, because so many things happen in your bedroom. I mean, we've argued in our room, which we now vow not to argue in the room, but we try to make our bedroom our, our sanctuary. That's our sanctuary, like for real. So there's some things like if the argument gets heated up, we're like, mm, come on out this room. We're not having that in here. So when you take it out of the bedroom, you open it up to a new location. Now they can be free to ask you some questions. You're not hindered about something that might come up that takes you back to something else. You know how we can go back. But anyway, they can ask you 20 questions. Yeah. See, you know what I'm talking about? You used to work in the bedroom. Now you had to move your desk out. Yes. Yeah. Keep the bedroom just that place where you go for refuge. You don't want to be mad in the bedroom. We'll talk about that another day. But here you go. So once the location is determined, cool. Argue naked. <laughs> it wouldn't be no arguing. You're right. Look, next time we get into an argument, I'm going to just start undressing. What the? You just get on my neck. <laughs> He'll be all right with it. So once you get to the new location, come on, y'all. Focus, focus. Your partner can ask you up to 20 yes or no questions. Just yes. There's no explanation in these questions. Just yes or no questions. And then that'll determine the activity. All right. When you both, when both the location and the activity has been guessed, the game is over. You better stop. Shit. You said it's going to end in an argument. No, 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 no. Yeah, that'll be definitely a short argument. I know, Marquita. I, 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 I. Okay, anyway. <laughs> So if the guesser gets to the 20 questions without guessing correctly, have you guys played 20 questions before? Have you played 20 questions before? Say yes or no. Because I may be jumping ahead with this 20 questions. No. Oh my gosh. Okay. Okay. So, hmm, let's play a quick game with 20 questions. Y'all haven't played 20 questions? Okay, you said no. Here we go. This is how you play 20 questions. You determine what, see for, for the sex, you're gonna determine an activity. But 20 questions is usually played with like an object. So let's say I have, I have an item in my mind. You're gonna play 20 questions right now, but we're not gonna do 20, you're gonna do 10, okay? Just for the sake of letting, letting you, just for the example. To, for letting you know how the game goes. I have an object in my mind. You can ask me yes or no questions like, is it larger than a car? Is it, um, does it weigh one pound? Is it red? Is it green? So you can ask me questions, all right? So I have an object in my mind. Go with your questions. And I'll tell you yes or no. And then I'm going to transfer. This is good teaching. Then I'm going to transfer that to your activity. Is it big? No. Medium. Is it solid? Yes. You're getting this. Next question. Can you eat it? No. Is it blue? No. Bright? Mm, they come in different colors. Oh, I forgot. No explanations. Can you sit on it? Ha, no. Can you use it? Yes. Next question. Can you read it? No. Yeah. Is it sex? No. Can you hold it? Yes. Does it make noise? Yes. Do the kids know what it is? Yes. Can you hold it? Yes. It's a laptop, no, a tablet, see, now you're guessing. Now you're guessing. Let me tell you what it was. It was a phone. It was a phone. So now, let's take that back. <laughs> yeah, it's a phone. Ah! So now let's take that back to your, your third game. So you see how that goes? 
You see how that goes? So your third game is 20 questions. So you come up with an activity. This is what you do when you're doing 20 questions with sex. You come up with an activity. And you decide what that activity is going to be. And they start asking you the questions. So I'm going to come up with an activity. Hmm. Hmm. Mm, got one. Got one. Ready? Let's do 20 questions. But we're not doing this. We might. Okay, go. I'm ready for the questions. Is it a place? No. Does it require you to stand? No. <laughs> That's a good question. Is it firm? No. Will it make you sweat? It can't. Mm, no, not necessarily. Are you in the bed? Mm, yes. Laying? Yes. Is it soft? Yes. Do you use your lips? No. <laughs> Is it exercise? No. Is it sweet? No. Pillow? No. Fingers? No. Do you use your hands? Yes. See, y'all got it. Y'all got it. Y'all got it. On your knees? No. Is it a pillow? No. No. No massage. It can be done on the butt, though. You give up? No, it's not the phone again. Pow. <laughs> you give up? You give up? All right. Tickle with a feather. That's the activity. Tickle with a feather. Isn't that fun? See, that increases your... I mean, that's fun. Right. Tickle with a feather. So that's how you do 20 questions. So if you didn't learn nothing tonight, you learned how to play 20 questions. <laughs> Spanking. No. That wasn't it. But we can do that. But that wasn't it. So this is good, huh? Cool. With a feather, he might be. Ooh. Tickle with a feather. And then you can say tickle with a feather on a certain part of the body. Let me ask you a question. Have you ever. Oh, if you're not over 18, I'm sorry. Your mama should have you in the bed anyway. It ain't my fault. Um, have you ever tickled the testicles with the feather? All right, that's all. So here's the conditions. Remember, we always talk about the instructions. So those are the instructions, <laughs> baby. The conditions and the variations. So here's the here's the conditions. So you have to set the ground rules for playing. Set the ground rules. Remember, we're talking about trust and respect as well with sex. When you build that trust and you build that respect, you're going to build the sex. So you set the ground rules. So whether the, whether the location is at home or somewhere else, because you might change the location like you're coming from the bedroom to the living room. That's a different location. No, girl. No guy. I don't know if it's a girl or a guy. Oral's not a sin. Um, so whether it's you change the location in the house or you've actually gone somewhere else, agree whether the activity is something you have done before or not. Okay? Because remember the game before that, how you made your list and you didn't want to just bombard them? Get some prior information. Because if they've never used hot wax, then you can't just be using hot wax, okay? We're, we're always building on what we're doing. Right, thank you, husband, for saying that. So you set the ground rules and make sure that it is something that they would want to do. Lick, such, oh, suck. Lick, suck, kiss, touch, all that. All that, we're going L-S-K-T. <laughs> and then the variations. Here's the variation. Make the other aspect of love uh, play part of the game. For instance, guess a body part to kiss or a prop to use, just like what I took you through. You might even have some props. and You might say, hey, I'm about to 
um, I'm about to massage your butt. But what am I going to massage it with? And then you might have some stuff right there. I don't know. So less than the number of questions allows for a more challenging version. Because remember when I cut it down to 10 questions, you had to come up with just your 10. 20 questions gives you a little longer to guess. So that's a variation. You can go from 10 que from 20 questions to 10 questions. So there we go. I gave you three things tonight, three games. So if you are just jumping in the scope, <laughs> if you're just jumping in the scope, what we're talking about is sex games for married couples, how to increase your intimacy and enjoy sex in your marriage. And what we talked about, we talked about the spiritual intimacy, the emotional intimacy, and the physical intimacy. The first two leads to the last one. Three day for the month of May. Oh, girl, that's a lot of scoping. See, now I can see better. Three a day for the month. I don't know if you can handle three a day. You're not even having sex three times, three days in a row. Remember, some people aren't having sex that often. So if I did three a day in the month of May, it sounds good. It really does. But we would lose, we would lose some of our games. Unless you do three games in one set. That's too much. That sounds good though. Three a day. <laughs> Every third day. Okay, that's good, Sherry. That's good. Every third day. Hmm. Every third day come with three more. You said twice a week for me. Okay, y'all gonna hold me down just like you did last time. Lord Jesus. I'll be sore three times a day. I'll be sore for real. I, okay, what if I commit to every weekend like I did for the 10 ways to show your husband that you love him? What if I came back every Friday? To get it on and pop in for the weekend. Get your Friday freaky on. That's it. Freak Friday. <laughs> How about Freaky Friday? Who likes Freaky Friday? You like Freaky Friday? I'll come on Fridays and give you three more ways. Yes, let's do Freaky Friday. Ministry Monday. Oh, baby, you so sweet. Okay, you said you thought to how many? Okay. <laughs> You'll be on after church? Good. Hey, have you ever prayed before you had sex? Everyday freaky. Turn out Tuesdays. That sounds good too. <laughs> I like that. Turn out Tuesdays. Turn out Tuesdays. Turn up Tuesdays. Freaky Friday. Uh, oral Sunday. Wet Wednesdays. Ooh, we. <laughs> she said, no, but I want to pray before sex. Do it. Do it. I know Marquita's on here and she has prayed before sex. Oh, me and my husband, we have prayed before sex and that Lord God, you talking about, you know, when you was out in the world and you'd be like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Well, he didn't hear you. He didn't hear you, but he hears you when you're married. You'd be like, oh my God. He'd be like, yes, what you need. And he brings down the fire in that thing. Ooh, that's how you be shaking at the end of it. Legs be shaking. You just want to turn over and suck your thumb. <laughs> Pray before sex. Come, You know what? Because you're coming on one accord. You come together as one before sex. Oh my God, that sex is going to be so good. I'm, and you know what? I don't make promises and guarantees are not a guarantee. But I can tell you, if you bring God into your relationship, that is a guarantee. <laughs> you said you're glad you're over 40 for this scope. You just have to be married for this scope. Yes. Oh my God. That's my husband talking. Curl up in a fetal position. Woo! Yes, pray during sex. Yes. Yes, and pray after sex. You'd be like, God, I thank you. God, let me let's let's do that right now. Let's thank God for sex. Say, God, I thank you for sex. You said during what do you say? 
God, I thank you for my husband's penis. God, I thank you that you keep my vagina wet. God, I thank you that the fit is just right. God, I thank you that my husband's body feels good to me. And God, I thank you that my, that my body feels good to him. God, I thank you that he finds me attractive and that I find him attractive. God, I thank you for the height we're about to go to. Yes. Yes, I God, I thank you for sex. Yes. Thank him for it. It's a gift. We thank God for our children. We thank God for our jobs. God, I thank you for this new car you gave me. You thank God for the car. You thank God for the good food. Thank God for sex. She said, y'all really be praying like that, baby? These folks don't believe what I'm saying. Yeah. Yes, we really pray like that. You should hear his prayers. God, I thank you for this big booty. <laughs> Yes. Yes. I'm I'm for real. And do you know what that does to me when he's like thanking God for my booty? Girl, that just make me want to a little bit harder. I'm telling you. <laughs> it's the truth. God, I thank you for my wife's breasts. I thank you for how they feel in my hand. God, I thank you that her body just feels so good to me. Lord, you made this woman for me. You said do the clap. You know what I'm... Yes. Yes. Yes, and read you some songs of Solomon. Now, before we reach to the point where we would pray together before we had sex, or we would pray together while we're having sex, or we'll pray together... After we have sex, before we made it to that point, we used to read the Songs of Solomon. He used to read the Songs of Solomon, and I would just listen while he read it. And that, mm, mm. what did it say, baby? What's the third verse again? Say that again. What did Solomon say? How, well, how did he describe her breasts? He said, little heels. What? And where did she say? The sweet fruit? Oh, what do you think he meant by the sweet fruit? And then he would say, your fruit is sweet. And I'd be like, oh, <laughs> my fruit is sweet like the songs of Solomon. Come on. Come on. She said, I'm on it. Yes, get on it. Yeah, he better eat his fruit. Fruit? Okay, let me tell you, Marquita is bringing up something. She said, eat his fruit, eat his fruit, eat his fruit. Um... <laughs> Yes, eat your husband's fruit. But if your husband eats fruit, his fruit will taste even sweeter. I was just about to get to that, Evangelist Val. Yes, I had to lead him up to it. Can't just remember, I'm, I can't just force this stuff out here like that. Um, <laughs> pineapples is a very good fluid changing taster. That's how I'm going to say it. You heard that? I know it. Yeah. Pineapples. And so is, um, no, 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 no. Be careful about putting things in your vagina. Be careful about that. Putting things near the vagina, maybe, but be careful about putting things in your vagina because your vagina is made to, um, come against any foreign things. So you can actually cause yourself to get, a uh, bacterial infection. Yeah. So eating fruit <laughs> by Marquita. Yeah, not in the VJJ. Don't put nothing in there. Eating fruit. Another good pineapples is one good thing. And so is um, mandarin oranges. Yes, yes. Queen Angie, exactly. It can lead to a bacterial infection and it also can lead to a um, yeast infection. So sugar in the vagina increases the yeast in your vagina. Yeah. So don't, don't see a lot of people, they get to putting stuff on there and licking it out and all that kind of stuff. No, don't You put it near it. Like I don't put anything. I'm real sensitive. Oranges on what? No, you eat the oranges, Tommy. You eat the oranges and you become sweet. Do, yeah, and the woman too. 
And then she'll taste sweeter. Her vagina will be sweeter. <laughs> You're dying laughing. <laughs> I was about to say something. I totally forgot. Totally forgot. Yes, exactly. See, she said it nicely. You'll have sweet juices if you eat the fruit. Strawberries, not so... I'm not so sure about strawberries. I know pineapples and mandarin oranges because they're high acidic. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It has to be an acidic fruit. The point is to have the taste in your mouth. Yeah. Why not? I mean, if it has to go in your mouth, it might as well taste sweet. That's what I'm that's what I'm saying. Yes, very much so. And we don't talk about this. His diet and your diet will affect the taste of your fluids. Just like a nursing mother. When I nursed my kids, I had to watch what I ate. This is just, I mean, what I said, like we're talking about sex now. Yes, but all of this goes with your whole marriage, your whole life, your body, everything. Um, when I was nursing my children, one of my kids, she says, sperm, what? One of my kids did not like onions. So when I would eat onions, she would just pull away. She didn't want it. So I'd have to dump, pump and dump. No, you don't have to. No, 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 you don't have to. We didn't say that. Did we say swallow? No, we said taste. We said taste. Nobody said swallow. You don't have to swallow. You can spit. <laughs> you don't even have to do that. No. No, you don't have to. If you want to, do it. Yeah. See, Chrissy says spit. But when you're, um, oh my God, tell the boy. When you are licking and sucking, then you know there is some fluids to come out anyway. So it might as well taste sweet. That's what I'm saying. Going both ways. Going both ways. When you get wetter, he tastes that. Right. The pre-ejaculation. Right. It leaks. It's called, um, well, yeah, it is called pre-ejaculation. But it's that natural moisturizer. You have it. He has it. That's what gets you all moist and wet and stuff. She said, what's leaking? Hmm, how? He's drinking, so you're swallowing. Hey. This is your first time on my scope? Well, thank you for coming, Evangelist Val. Yes. And I have a doctorate in education. Your first timer too? Wow. I got a lot of first timers. Well, welcome. Welcome. Well, if this is your first time and you just jumped in, I am Dr. Melinda Harper. I'm the author of A Prophet to Her Husband. And wow, y'all. Well, welcome, 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 welcome. I'm the author of A Prophet to Her Husband. And you do see the play on words, prophet and prophet in the shadows. So the P-R-O-F-I-T is for... The husband should be able to trust her and she should be a prophet to him. She should bring, she should enrich him. And then the P-R-O-P-H-E-T is that she is supposed to speak life into her husband. So prophet and prophet. And if you want to get the book, you can get it at Barnes, not Barnes and Noble. Ooh, speak that into existence. <laughs> Amazon.com or my website, DrMelindaHarper.com. So welcome first timers. So let's get back to the sex. Are there any questions? So someone talked about swallowing. No, you don't have to swallow, but the, you are going to get some. Yeah, I need it in Barnes and Nobles. What's good for dryness? Um, his wetness. <laughs> and there are some products that you can use. There are some products that you can use. Make sure that they're not alcohol based because that will dry you out even more and definitely not Vaseline and if you want to use good old saliva that'll work well yes Queen Angie that has been researched that there are so many women who have not had orgasms 
And one of the main reasons for that is because, yes, a lot of heels. One of the main reasons that women, um, so many women have not had orgasms um, is because they're, they have not explored their bodies. Vaseline is really not, although it's a, it's not a lubricant. It's not a lubricant. <laughs> You're stuck on that, aren't you? You're like, I'm not swallowing. You don't have to. Remember that I said at the top of this, and we're not even talking to, <laughs> this wasn't even one of our games. We're going to get to that. So saliva isn't, isn't enough, then I'll look for something that is. Um, at the top, I said, whatever you don't like, throw it out. Throw, throw it out. You don't have to swallow. Why do some get some enjoyment from anal sex? Because of the gland. No, I'm not a sex therapist. I just enjoy sex with my husband now. And I'm trying to help other people enjoy sex in their marriage. There was a time when I did not enjoy it. KY Jelly, that's no, that's a long time. What games? So we had some sex games tonight that we talked about. We I gave three. When we finish, we're going to have a hundred. And, and we have agreed, if you just jumped in, that we're going to do Freaky Fridays. Freaky Fridays in the marriage. Fix that. No, no, we're not freaking right now. Silky smooth. Okay, so you're getting some um, relax your throat. And guess what? You don't even have to do all that. You don't have to stick it all down your throat. There's other ways to do that without gagging. How do you explore your body if masturbation is a sin? You are, explore you are exploring your body with your spouse. Good, then you're in the right place. Slip and slice. Hmm, never heard of that. I'm going to have to look that up right now. Slip and slice. Is that a um, lubricant? So that could be something we recommend. And how do you explore your body? You allow your spouse to, to explore your body. And then you find out what you like and what you don't like. You let them, you can, you can do all of this with your husband. How did you change your interest in sex? First of all, I changed my mind about sex. Sweets, seven. That was the first thing I did. I had to change my mind. Then I had to change what I wanted as an outcome. I had to change my language about it. And we did explore. Like I talked about the Songs of Solomon. He would read the Songs of Solomon. We would talk about that. And I never heard about toothpaste either, but I allowed him to just touch my body and wherever I said, mm, we made a note of it. I mean, we didn't actually have a piece of note paper, but we made a note of it like, oh, I like that. I didn't know I liked that. Do that again. Put a little pressure right there. Hmm. Lick a little faster. This slower, softer. Yeah. That's what I mean by explore. And I did the same thing for him. I wanted to know what he liked and what he didn't like. Because we often bring our past relationships into our marriage. And so you're really giving your husband or your wife what Kevin or Keisha liked. I guess I'll try, but he needs to wash that thing first. Yes, we call it washing the day off of it. Baby, wash the day off of it. We, yeah. Wash the day off of it. There's nothing wrong with that. And see, we get so hung up. See, you did it wrong for so long that now you're ashamed of it when you should have been ashamed of doing it before. Ooh, that would be fun. Get a shower curtain, pin it to the bed, square baby oil on it. You know what? <laughs> We will be cracking up, falling. Somebody will get hurt. <laughs> I'm going to just do a little bit of baby oil. <laughs> oh, my God. Get in the tub. Yes, yes. You know what? Just stand there. If you want to, <laughs> right, if somebody will break a hip, you'll be like, what happened to you, Dr. Harper? Girl, that's slip and slide. <laughs> 
So your husband said he would do sex every day, many of the well then he has a high sex drive. You missed the beginning. Okay, so we were talking about 100 sex games, and I'm only giving three at a time, so we can try those, come back, say how they work, didn't work, you like them, didn't like them. So that's what the scope is about. We are increasing our intimacy in our marriage. Don't do, you don't do this in a room with hardwood floors, right? Because you might bust your head. Yes, I do like candles. I love candles. You said this is needed in your marriage because it was getting rocky since you lost over 200 pounds. Oh, if you lost over 200 pounds, he may be feeling a little like um, nervous about you leaving maybe. But yeah, come on, join us. We're taking our, yes, and congratulations on the weight loss too. Because we were just talking about that. Someone on here was saying that their sex life has gone down because they've gained weight and they're not that's like the root of yeah of their insecurity is that they've gained weight and sometimes it could lead to insecurity when you lose weight oh wait well then you need to girl you better get off of here and get the sucking then don't use your teeth unless you know how don't bite that hurts do we have kids in there? Yeah, we do. That's what I'm trying to Oh, my God. You bite, you get bit back. He said you bite, you get bit back. Hey. That might feel good. Yeah, no biting. No biting. Teeth hurts. I love candles. Yeah, she used to throw, not your teeth. But she said that she has a, um, if you have a bad gag reflex, don't use your throat then. Use your lips. And Tom. And a lot of saliva. See what he likes. I'm just I'm just saying. Just see what he likes. Okay, you just joined. I am Dr. Melinda Harper. I'm the author of someone asked me to do this again. I'm the author of A Prophet to Her Husband. And you can get my book on Amazon.com or uh, drmelindaharper.com and I'm a marriage mentor I help marriages heal um, increase the marriages I'm all about family healthy relationships that's who I am yeah and I don't yeah just keep coming back you'll you'll see how I flow I usually have something intentional that I'm talking about. I don't just get on here talking about blah, 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 blah. Every now and then, you know, I'll do like a fun scope. You'll see my kids doing some rock climbing or roller skating. I mean, cause that's who I am. I'm a mom too. I'm a mom. I'm a wife. I'm a business owner. Um, I'm an author. I'm an educator. And pretty much I'm trying to help wives like me bring a balance to all that. Okay. Listen, listen, pretty, listen. As soon as my husband gets my son the heck out of here, because it is 9.30, they should be in a bed anyway. And he's trying to ear hustle. I'm going to help you, pretty witch. I mean, wait a minute. Pretty's witches one. I'm going to just call you pretty. I'm going to help you, pretty, okay? I'm going to help you. I'm going to help you, pretty. Good night, son. Oh, and daughter. Good night. I can't believe they're still up. That's because I started scoping before they got home. And when they walked in the door, I didn't get to be the mom and say, hey, you know, did you get your clothes ready for them? Blah, 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 because I was too busy on Periscope. Yeah, they're ear hustling. Do not come in this kitchen, Kennedy. Good night. No, we don't swing. The swinging lifestyle will get you divorced. Your swinging lifestyle will get your marriage messed up. God never intended it to be three people. Kennedy Harper, I don't like your tone right now. Go to bed. I know they're really interested in what I'm talking about. They need to stop. Okay, so 
Pretty. Listen to me, pretty. You ready? It's it's okay to be nervous. It's and it is absolutely normal to be nervous. I did not start receiving oral sex. How, how old was I? 39, 40? Mm-hmm. No, 39. Until I was like 39. I wasn't comfortable with it. I was not comfortable with it. I had never done that before. And I remember saying long time ago, even though I had had sex prior to marriage, that was one thing I was going to say for my husband. Like as crazy as I was doing all this stuff, you know, having sex, I was going to save that for my husband. Like I want to be a virgin in that area. That's crazy. But anyway, so I had never, yeah, 39. And I had friends who was like, oh my God, girl. I definitely make them lick before they stick. I was like, mm-mm, I ain't letting nobody's mouth get down there on me. No, that's gross. That's nasty. I don't ever want to do that. And so when we got married, marriage, one man, one woman, right, right. So when we got married, he would try and I would let him like for three or four seconds and then I'd freak out and be like no 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 stop 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 come up come up come up like I would like make sure that I just didn't want that to happen so how did I get over that pretty listen in one of our exploring times he didn't just go for it he said he had to talk me through it he had to talk me through it he was like okay baby I'm about to lick your thigh i'm like okay okay lick my thigh i'm comfortable with the thigh so then he went closer then he did a lips okay 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 that's a little hard can you soften up so as i talked him through it and it wasn't just the first time that i started to enjoy it it took me months to start to enjoy it because i didn't know how i i wasn't familiar with that i wasn't familiar with it so it took me a while, one, to get comfortable with it. and Right. Right. Yes, yes, yes. So that's what I'm saying. Take it slow and let him know. Say, hey, I really want to try to please you orally. Because that's what you said. That's what we're talking about. I really want to try to please you orally. One, baby, I'm going to need you to help me through this. I want you to walk me through how to please you. And we may not get to the total full, me giving you a full, I don't know what you call it. I don't know if you call it a blow job or uh, I don't know what you call it, whatever y'all call it. We may not get to the fullness of it, oral flavor. We may not get to the full oral flavor of it, but I want to lead up to it, right? So you might start with kissing him on his thighs. Just be down there, explore down there. Explore down there. Sniff, smell, get the aroma of his body. Like right there between the thigh, underneath the the testicles, touch the testicles. No, you finish him off. You finish him off while you while you kiss his thigh. That's fun. And you know what? See, when we talked about, yes, a gradual process. Thank you, Sherry. You always have the words for me. (laughs) Just a gradual process. Tonight, it might be the thigh. Next time, it might be the thigh. The next time, it might be the thigh. And then you might get a little adventurous and be the thigh and the testicles. Then it might be the thigh, the testicles, and the tip. Just gradually. It might take you an entire year. So what? Uh Uh-oh, you got to go. Explain it to him first. Say, baby, I I want to learn how to please you in this area because I know you like this. So teach me what you like and let's go slow, okay? Okay? You have to say that to him because you don't want him to think he's going to get the whole total flavor tonight. What can be done to increase your sex drive? I heard exercise can 
increase your sex drive. But what we talked about emotionally and spiritually, that can increase your sex drive. And foreplay, yes. And foreplay starts way before the ministry moment. Have a good night, pretty. Are singles allowed in here? Mm, I can't say that. I won't be the one to say that. Because I can't endorse sex and singles. Right. Make a month of it. And foreplay is in the mind. Yep. You got to pump yourself up. You got to get ready. We even talked about doing it when you don't feel like it. Yes, it's a marriage scope. Marriage sex scope. Definitely like preheating the oven. <laughs> Okay, so you guys, I'm going to go. It is 9.43 where I am. Good. Take notes. Yes. And I will do a wives in waiting. I keep saying that. We're going on a cruise at the end of this month. So right when we get back, I'm going to do the wives in waiting. Then I'm going to hit, like, follow right back with that with a 40-day love dare. You are welcome. You're welcome. You want a wife? Good. Do you want to be a husband? See, go back and watch what I said. Okay, cool. Because I got on the, the women about that. I want a husband. I want to be married, but they haven't said they want to be a wife. And then you say you want a wife. You want to be married, but do you want to be a husband? Totally different. 1148 there, Sherry. Good night, Sherry. I'm done. You're not going to miss anything. I'm about to hang up because I got to get my kids ready. Boaz, yes. Guess what? We talked about that. Boaz is not the only one. Moses and Joseph, and there's a whole bunch of them. Some good characteristics, too. So enjoy your games. Go back and catch the games. Fast forward into about 15, 20 minutes, and there are three games to play with your spouse. Yes, turn your notifications on so you don't miss my scopes. We are, I will come back Friday, and I know that's soon because I just gave you three. So you have you have two days. Two days to work those three. Those are easy ones. Easy as ABC. So go ahead. I got another book coming out. No, they ain't ready for this. They should have told you about this, but they didn't. So you guys meet me back here Friday and we will talk about three more games to incorporate into your sex and marriage. Thanks for coming. Bye-bye. <laughs>